went to the GT folks like, hey, we want to make an American GT series. Well, I, that's what a little I, smaller, little nimbler car that we can run around, go to like to Chicago. Like this car is just too big for a track. Well, and that's what the I way thought it's laid out. They were going to do because these are based off of four door sedans. Yeah. <gasps> uh, uh, that was in the I have to take pictures of pack. Uh oh. Oh no. So I guess we'll take the ones that I used of it yesterday. Um, it's my fault. I left it in there. I didn't specify. It's all oh, good. Oh no. Well, Wait. it's not like we can't go outside. Well, so that's the sun's out. Here, real quick. So you can decide. Do you want to go outside and take a picture of no. it? No. Here's my thoughts. Because here's what I did yesterday. Oh, done. And that's what I figured. Just call that good. Done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'll just use that. That's fine. I mean, I didn't get. Let's do a pod so we can watch some of this before oh shit welcome to another episode of the american beer review podcast good times with good friends requires good beer lucky for us we know how to pick all three we're a group of friends who grew up in the pacific northwest giving us a jump start on our craft beer journey Join us today while Brian... I pride myself on not getting to know other people, so do not put that on me. <laughs> Alec. So the bananas up until like the 60s were an entirely different species of banana. And Chad. It hit me like a back in bar. <laughs> Review some beer, talk about beer topics, and whatever else comes up. We invite you to pour yourself a drink and hang out with us. Oh, he buried it. Cut. Kyle, nope. Kyle, that is not good. Dude. Is that you? Yes. My guy, and you're in the Kyle Cush ride. That's the problem. It's like he home, got un- home slice. You didn't hit your brakes. But his car is fine. He's no, just, it's not. No. I'll bet you he's Those fine. Those are all full of water. I bet you he's fine, but he is under them. Dude's got a a, a ton, literally a ton of tires sitting on the roof of his. He's car. dropping window net right here. No, he'd be dumb. Can he? Can he get towed out? Yeah. And still race. Yeah. Then, dude, you I want to see him get pulled out of this. I, I would, t- if I were his team, I would be like, do not drop that net. It, it's the third, it's the third lap. Oh, no. Yeah. Way. I would be like, let's figure this out. What did you oh, do? Oh, oh, oh. Shit. Oh. 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 That you know what? Is, Those are no longer full of water. That car is wrecked. Dude, oh, you know I want to see it come out. I'd really want to see it come out. Do not drop he's, that he's, net. He's asking him to back him out. Yeah, back. back Do not out. drop that net because he back was trying. Out, but dude, that is—he just way, went slick there. That and is then, that is way too early to try a pass like that. I don't think it was a pass. I think he nah. would just. And he he was on the outside. Wide. They're telling like him he's got to go. Oh, no, they're no, not. No, they're pulling, him. They're pulling yeah. him. Come on. No, I believe it. We can do it. There's a reason. There's the hook there. Yeah, it's four out of a hundred laps. Come on. 100%. Like, you know someone's going to get wrecked worse than that. Mm-hmm. You can make it through to at least, like, finish mid-pack. Well, I'm picking first next week is what I'm... Oh, you picking. mean like me last week when Ryan Blaney just slammed into the wall? And I was like, well... Game over. That's not great. I want to see what's left of this car after they yank it out. That, that's that got a lot more weight than you think. Especially full of water. Yeah, there was this shitload of water that came out. But maybe it all went up. Anyways... Time to review a beer. Yeah. Let's do this. Uh, we have... So, from Weld Works Brewing. There you go. Perfect. I'll pour it out. This out, wasn't uh, a roller, was it? No, I don't roller. think so. It's not a smoothie, like, style. No, 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 no. Um, oh, hey. Look, yes. the car looks great. Actually, surprisingly yeah. good. Huh. It's Amazing. almost like somebody said that from the beginning. Uh, Weld Works uh, is... And this is a, this is a collab with another brewery, oh, is it? I believe. Um, this specific beer. And this is a New England IPA. This is our first any IPA. Yeah, bright what? side. Yeah. Bright side. No, it's not on the, on this podcast. No, it's not. We haven't done. What other New England IPA have we done? I don't know. On this podcast, we've done a year's worth of podcasts. You're telling me we've never done it and. A New England IPA New on England any of style? them? No, we've done nine months worth of podcasts. We haven't. I don't recall a New England IPA style. Then beer. some of these breweries are lying to themselves. Oh, because hazy is technically a yes. New England style. 
Oh, I yeah. gotcha. Uh, bright well, side no. tide. Okay. It's not a hazy. Yeah, bright side tide hazy IPA. On their website, it is called the New England style, but yes. hazy is the New England to our Northwest IPA. Gotcha. This clears up a lot of things because, <laughs> like, I would get things ordered in, and they say hi- hazy, and then you see. This, this is like the first one I've seen advertised as a New England IPA. So it's mean and then, they don't usually call them out as a New okay. England style. What yes. you're saying, so this is what okay. the difference is, is you're saying the can is not calling itself a New England IPA. But I can tell you that like half of them would probably, because when you look on Untapped or those types of things, yeah. it is an IPA hyphen New England slash hazy. Yes. So to say that we've never had a New England you just mean either they literally have not been from New England or it hasn't said New England. They haven't can. called it themselves that. But basically what that means is you're on the West Coast and there's no added benefit from attaching yourself to a style that's all the way across the country. Which is interesting because this is out of Greeley, Colorado. I, I'm just saying some breweries might yeah. choose that. Okay. I, I think but to 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 claim that we have never had a New England IPA, uh, I'm gonna call BS. Okay, a thousand. But I specifically have not. Okay, yeah, but, yeah. Okay. It, they but, might not have put I, it on well, the I, can themselves. I, I screwed us up even more because this says on Tabor, right side tide IPA dash New Zealand. Oh, so really? is New Zealand IPA a thing? So if oh. if it's that, okay, so I'll tell you about that one. So okay. what they're probably doing with that, if it's saying New Zealand, is there's a few hops that are from New Zealand. Can you still use those hops and make a New England IPA? Yes. Um, that's my point. Can you get a West Coast IPA from a brewery on the East Coast? Sure. Is, are they always going to call it a West Coast IPA? No, not necessarily. No, they might just... Like, is there even a category in like the BJC B, B J C P? I don't know one of those. Is there that um, style of a West Coast IPA, or are we just out here saying, "Oh, did you put a ton of piney bitter hops in it?" Right. That's going to be a West Coast one. And what has come into is like, did you just make a hazy IPA? Yeah, it turns out that's a New England IPA because do you know where hazies originated? New England. Uh, you said it's a collab. This is with um, Alvarado Street Brewery mm-hmm. out of Monterey, California. Hey, Chad. Hang on. Hang on. I just want to clarify things up so I didn't think I had. Okay. So it does. So on Untapped, it is a New England hazy, but then on Tavor, it says IPA dash New Zealand. So it's probably just the hops. I just don't want to confuse the uh, listener that. uh, Oh yeah, because we're talking out ever confuse. We're we're talking out of our booty about what this beer is, but. Uh, Hey Chad, where's Monterey, California? San Diego. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, it's not. not. Monterey's. Closer to Bay Area, right? Yeah. Not, not, even close. not even close. Not even close, actually. No. Other side of LA. It's like... <laughs> it's Monterey where um, Captain Kirk and um, Scotty went to go look for humpback whales in the 21st century because they Ooh. were extinct in the 24th. Oh, you know what? And they needed the humpback whales to communicate to a uh, alien <sighs> intelligence so they didn't burn the Earth to death. And hey, let's have fun in the 70s and Captain Kirk may have... Made impregnated it, half made the city. It, made it with a lady from the seventies who was, yeah I wasn't so who happened to be happened to be like the world's foremost uh, intelligence on humpback whales. What? So you're just Amazing. doing research? Amazing. Just doing research at that point. Yeah. Brian's falling asleep. Oh, I'm just waiting, waiting for us to be I, done. I we talked about this. Yeah. I maybe have not been. I mean, the coolest thing about that whole movie was like Scotty went, "Oh yeah, uh, our glass in the future is made out of aluminum." Yeah, Claire Aluminum, you don't have that. The, the hand waving. The the uh the uh, prime director doesn't count if it, you're if, in if it's your own culture. Yeah, yeah if it's your own in culture the in the past. Yeah. Anyways, how about this beer? All right, hazy IPA. I was just letting you guys do your thing and trying to not be a buzzkill. Did for we it, have so. uh so six point eight percent ABV? So we're mm-hmm. back up there. 
uh, kind of a cool can. Yeah, Wildworks is Wildworks is one that um, I actually put. They have a beer. I don't know if it's like a flagship or what the deal, but it's pretty well known. But I've had it on my list of like on untapped of like, please let me know if this is in the area, if I can find it. It's called Juicy Bits. Okay. Um, It late last year popped up, I think. And basically like, and I was like, oh my God, I went to like a brewery or two trying to, or a tap room there too, to try and find it. Uh, Kind of found out they also probably pulled a like Bells and just got a new distribution deal. And it turns out if I'd have just waited longer, it was everywhere. You would have found it, yeah. Yeah, not store um, availability, but like definitely Ooh. like tap room. So Juicy Bits, phenomenal. What about this watermelon cotton candy sour ale? Uh, I've had a peach pie from them that I really enjoyed. I'll tell you that much. Ooh, strawberry cheesecake? Yeah. I mean... Yeah, they got some fun stuff. They also have an extra, extra Juicy Bits. That's a, um Imperial version. They got a double dry hopped. Is that a bomb pop? Juicy Bits. Um, Flavored beer? Yeah, I mean, they, they're, we're looking at 740 on untapped, different styles that they have. So, trying to find my, what I've had. This one um, is a little lighter in the body. It's yes. not yes. Um, a stick, but I'm getting some really good fruitiness to it. Um, that's not just a standard citrus, I would say. It's um, it, it's definitely uh, so. Usually, like the IPAs that we've gotten, um, it's probably my fault because they've all been like ones that you we're, buy. We're, well. Or they're like, oh, hey, we're on the East Coast or somewhere else other than the West Coast. And this is our West Coast IPA. Mm -hmm. Seeing this as just a hazy IPA um, from Colorado without the monkier of this is a West Coast. I'm going into it with a different mindset of this. Okay, this is just a hazy IPA. Mm -hmm. With the caveat, I didn't know what a hazy IPA was. Apparently. Uh, more six than, months ago? Yeah, basically six months ago. T- today? Um, well, there is that. Essentially. <laughs> um, I don't know what a hazy is at any given time. Because, I get because what you're there, saying, there, there's such yeah. variance between, like, every time you crack one, it's somebody's interpretation of it. Yeah. But I think that's what it should be. I think there was a there was a okay this is going the way back machine we were doing the blog there was a stagnation in beer for a long time because everyone went i'm gonna blow your tits off with hops and Mm. we're gonna call it an ipa an imperial ipa and now we just haze stuff and we call it hey look yeah yeah well Uh, and i think there was a certain amount of gatekeeping on deciding what beer was acceptable yes Still is. If you don't, what, if you don't have it, if you don't have an IPA, softening. you're not a brewery. It, there's a lot of people who are real mad about things. Yeah, mad but about even, smoothie beers or those yeah. types of things. It's beer, and it's it's, it's an evolution of beer. Like uh, cars used to be V8 or go home, and then it became okay. Well, we're fine with the twin turbo V6. Uh, you're giving me a high output. Diesel inline four double twin. Uh, now you got a little bit of everything. Now everyone is like, okay, well you can have. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, I was doing a thing between engines and cars. Um, engines. Yeah, engine I was, I'm cars. still trying to engine connect cars the dots ideas. there. I, I have no idea what's going on. We're going off the rails here, folks. Uh, How about this? Yeah, I've had four beers from from um, Weldworks. Well, uh, so this one, obviously, uh, bright side tide, uh, peach pie, which is a smoothie or sour, nice five percent. Um, I, it's a, I put it basically smells and tastes exactly like they described that I was drinking a little peach pie, uh, snack there. Uh, but it turns out my favorite. I've had juicy bits, and then my favorite was a uh, double orange cream sickle milkshake. So, if you want to know where I stand on putting weird stuff into your beer, 
Yeah, I'll try it. As long as it's not a pickle. 100% or a cucumber, which is basically pickle light. Uh, yeah, 100%. No, this is fun. This is a good hazy. It's a good hazy. Um, it's a good non um, piney hazy. I'm getting a little more citrus. want to top off here? Yeah, citrus 100%. out of it. Um, I would say at this point, I mean, I've, I've only had hazies from them, but I would say, like, if I saw a Weldworks beer somewhere i'm i'm trying it i'm grabbing it i'm gonna like this is a well put together beer yeah i mean i saw i, I saw uh, ignoring my tangent about other things um this is a very well thought, it feels like a very well thought out and put together beer yeah. which if you're doing because this is a um when i popped on to their site the other day it's not in the rotation right now so this is mm. a like a seasonal ish I want to say it was a one-off. It's a collab. It's probably oh, a one-off. Oh, so probably it's a one-off. A, it's a one, yeah. So a one-off hazy. <clears throat> in this with a brewery quality. in California. Yeah. With oh, this so kind of quality. like the, the But but being able to just go, hey, we're going to do a hazy IPA with these folks and put like – there. it felt like there was a lot of thought into this beer compared to some – like we've had – I've I've had other hazies off the pod. mm that felt like they were just ticking the boxes. This doesn't feel like they're ticking the boxes. Like there was some actual thought behind this because everything's very well balanced. It's pretty clean for a hazy at this at this weight. Yeah. Uh the other thing I think about too, so Weldworks is out of Greeley, Colorado, uh northeast of Denver. But you're talking like uh actually from our kind of general thoughts of things, a pretty beer heavy area. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Denver, um, Fort Collins, Greeley all have some, some pretty well-known breweries. Right. Um, but yeah, Weldworks being one of those that like, I think I first heard about Juicy Bits when I was in Denver um, for a wedding, but beer hop, brewery hopping right, and chatting with someone and them just being like, oh, if you, I mean, this is, eight years ago, you know, and they're like, oh, if you can find it. So, you know, I add it to my list, like I said, and thinking, well, I'll never find it in Seattle and that they've found better distribution that, I mean, this is the a um, Tavor drop. So this one's a Tavor drop, but every other Weldworks beer I've had, oh, I got from a local area. tap room. Like I got from a bottle shop. So, um, all, all cans that have been from different, hmm. um, places. So, yeah, so I'm. I mean, I feel pretty good about whatever they're putting out or what they're doing. So, um, yep, yeah, nope, solid beer. Yeah, uh, hazies aren't really my jam. I mean, it'd be a beer fridger. I mean, if, like I said, you'd change, I, if Juicy Bits is highly, if somebody's going like you have to try this beer, yeah, I would track it down uh, and find it. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. I I didn't actually score this the same as Juicy Bits. Yeah. I still think it's a really well done beer. I think yeah. it's really solid. This would be a tap room grab yeah. for me. Yeah. I mean, to have it as like like it is, if it's a collab, it's a one off. Like mm-hmm. if you had easy access to just be like, yep, I'm going to take that one of it. Um, I just. Uh, some of those other World War ones that I can easily a little bit easier get i'm gonna put in better rotation uh if this were more in rotation i'm not mad about it but probably probably beer fridge okay uh i am fine with this being a tour drop um since it is a one-off um i think i guess that should be one of our categories right too just a (laughs) one-off or a tour drop yeah i'm just making shit up as i go um yeah i've i've feel like i'm not missing out by this not being if it is if it is actually a one-off i'm not feel like i'm missing anything out because there are flavors like it Mm. that Mm. i could find locally there's nothing unique but it's overall it's a good fun beer fantastically done Mm -hmm. i'm gonna Mm -hmm. keep this as dvor drop slash we'll call it if this was an everyday availability, it'd be super. It might be seasonal. It might be. I I popped in today. You had a 
available. on tap. Yeah, you yeah. add it available as a can pour or available in a can. I'll take it, but yeah. it's it's not something I'm going to seek out because yeah. that the the flavors I'm getting I can find elsewhere. There are literally millions of beers being made. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think it says anything against the brewery or doing that. No, it's, no, no, no. It's not a bad beer. It's just, yeah. It's just. I finished my glass. Yeah. And I've topped it off. Yeah. No, it's it's a good one. I just like um really good version, good fun, enjoyed it, but like I'm not gonna go out of my way to try and grab the next one. But if I see something different from Weldworks, oh I'll try another one, yeah, oh, yeah. For sure. What, uh, turns out next time I'm gonna get some like Weldworks? double dream uh, crazy yeah, beer list. Yes. <laughs> So if I could beer fridge another Weldworks beer, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. Some give me some cotton candy sour. I know, mm-hmm. and, I'll, and mm-hmm. I'll give that a taste for sure. Yeah. <laughs> uh, do we before we wrap up today want to touch on drinkflation? I think we do. I, I read that one. And I was very interested because it was written um, with the Australian perspective. Uh, UK, I believe, or UK. With their, um, it's almost the same. The taxes, yeah. Other That's side true. of the world. <laughs> Listen, imperialism, man. It's all the same. But it was an interesting idea of <clears throat> the fact that they're taxed on the amount of alcohol mm-hmm. in the beverage, and if the and they're like, well, the distributors and the brewers are pocketing the difference. Well, yeah. There's a few that like I've seen breweries that price based on ABV. Yeah. Uh, where you kind of just can tell that yeah. like that's the thing that they're doing. Um, taxing by it, I mean, because that's the issue. So yeah, they're saving millions of pounds, dollars, uh, based on the tax because they tax by ABV. So whereas we've seen that here and probably and more universally that. is uh, package size shrinking. Yeah. So going yeah. from a seven ounce to a five ounce or whatever, but keeping the cost the same mm-hmm. or price the same to the consumer, they're reducing ABV, but keeping the package size the same. The package size the same. And pocketing the difference. And the bigger one is the tax. The shady thing is they're, it's not very much. They're saving like. Two or three pence. Yeah. A a couple cents a can, which adds up if you're shipping a ton. If you're Foster's, if you're saving saving three cents a can. Yeah. Um, Yeah, but like. But the shady thing is they're pitching it as we're trying to make you guys healthier. Yeah. By cutting the alcohol out of it. And But I I don't blame them because that's what I thought of when I thought of it, of like if, if we were doing that here in the U.S., like. I think you're going to see a few more low ABV styles. You're going to see a few more like offerings of that because they're like, hey, we don't have to charge you as much for this. But they're not passing the savings along. But the goof. Oh. Okay, so the and that's and that's that's the yeah. grift. Is okay, okay, okay. They're saving on the tax, but they're they're still charging the same amount. So you're not passing but, that savings along. So to then, the but are you? But are you, But would you, as an American consumer, catch? Oh hey, this should be five to cents. Zero ten cents cheaper. Five to with, ten cents with as we drink light with macro beer. All of a that sudden the doesn't dom- even have an ABV on it. Yeah. But all of a sudden really? the dominance in your single pack section is sixteen ounce, twenty-two ounce, nine point plus IPAs. It's in the serving facts. Yeah. Hidden. Very but like but like it you but like we You probably can't read that. I can read up close. But like we were saying, like yeah. all of a sudden in your 16 and your 22 single section, instead of being Hurricane Malt Liquor, it's now Voodoo Ranger double IPA at 9%. We're seeing the exact opposite in our single serve. People going to, hey, we're going to pit, fit as much ABV in the cans as possible. Get you your bang for your buck, yeah. yeah. But I mean, there's a time and place. Like we've talked about it before. If I'm having a beer for the night, Okay, I'm gonna have the double, yeah. but like, but doing the like, how, how do I phrase this? Like, no, I think I, I stand by it. Like, if I'm having the one, if I'm having that, like, yeah. like, yeah, I'm probably gonna get the boozier version. 
but to an extent, because you're gonna yes. get you're gonna get the double IPA because it still but tastes I, good. You're not going for malt liquor, no. which is gonna give you way more bang for your buck for one oh, beer. Oh yes, I get yes, like. Because even the get some King there's Cobra, a, there's a local brewery that made a malt liquor. Then it was like it was fine. I'm not trying it or paying for that again. Right, like it's not that worthwhile. Like, I mean, we've long documented the interactions with ice beers. Right, yes. and it turns out that all of us, as all of us approach our forties, uh, we don't buy that. Mm-mm. And it's but in the grand scheme of things. It is a lower ABV than some of the doubles. Than most of the stuff that I buy and drink. Like I'll, I mean, I know that if I have three straight up mid six to low seven uh, ABV IPAs in a night, like unless I'm well hydrated, I'm still gonna hurt a little bit in the morning. Right. But uh, I, I if I had an ice, nah, man, shut it down like that. Tomorrow's wrecked. It's already yeah, over. Right. <laughs> it's game yeah, changer. What, yeah, what I do, I did the uh the big Lebowski beer last night at like ten percent. And Oof. it was like I I I finished the first half of it. A Saturday where yeah. you don't have to leave the house on yeah. Sunday sounds like the perfect time to drink yes, that. Yes, and so I I finished the first I'm half. I'm surprised of it. you got all of this set up in time. Did uh, it was rough. It was <laughs> uh, tight. It was tight. I, w- I was in the shower half hour before you guys showed up like i was like i had the idea like oh i'm gonna wake up at i'm gonna wake up at six i'm gonna get the lawn watered no i'm rolling out of bed at eight o'clock do you know what that is with a head full of regrets because i had one beer at 10 percent. that's a man who doesn't have children right because entirely entirely uh i've done everything i can to keep my kid out of my room before 6 30 in the morning and still like at a minimum by seven, there's zero chance I have not heard him making a ton of noise or doing oh, something. Man, that's that's why in your twenty when he's in his twenties. Oh, when you're up at four thirty in the morning, go, hey champ. Oh, are you up I yet? have already thought of the ways that I am just back? gonna like annoy the crap out of him. And when he asks, like, why are you being this way? And be like, I, I'm just trying to be like you. Hey, for man. like the first like few years of your life. Oh man, <laughs> this is where the payoff comes in because. <laughs> Payback's a bitch. You'll be approaching your 50s still dealing with the same thing at this point. What do you mean? And I will oh. have no children left at home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You you did you started a little you earlier. You did plan correct. You're going to be... Plan you, correct? You, yeah, you, we're going to call it planning. You, you sacrificed your 20s, but you're done with the bullshit. The older I get, by I go... The, by the time you're... Oh. You're, su- sundown. Mid, mid, mid 40s, you're done. I, this is the last kid. Because oh, yeah. any more, and I'm 60 before they're out of the house. Yeah. Well, I, but it, like I said, as it gets older, it's like, and it's kind of dark out. That uh, cornhole tournament. Oh, I went yeah. out in the first round. I, I did okay, 15. So I was respectable. It's 15, 21. Yeah. So I it's not bad. Showed I was. I, you can blame it on your partner. They're not here. I scored 15. <laughs> you can a hundred percent blame it on your partner. So, then uh, it was weird that it was on a hill and kind of lost. Oh so my you had you a, have the wind. You have a cornhole tournament and the settings are not ideal. Well, what is this? I think, throw the red flag. I off think the, stars. the last time I played was at your birthday party. We were supposed to practice. We were supposed to my practice. Bet. So that's uh, what I you never it on. texted me again. Uh, everyone, you said, never texted me every, again. Everyone says they're going to practice cornhole at before they play it. Your birthday. Which was your thirtieth birthday party? Was the last time, and I was allowed four warm up throws. Oh, four is a good one. That's all, all four bags. You got to throw all four bags one time. I got to throw all four bags one time for the first time in eight years. Oh, to, oh, you mean this time? That was my warm up. Oh yeah. So that's my getting dialed in. I thought pulling off a of fifteen. That's not. That's was, a huge shot. Yeah. Was yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty but decent. That's I was decent. very happy to go out in the first round because the tournament went until midnight. Ooh. And I was mm-hmm. fast asleep no. well before then. No. Yes. That is not okay. Give me to bed by 10. They're putting phones underneath the holes so that you could see where oh, you dude, were aiming. Like we you- got lights. We had a ring. And you can turn it on. Yeah. And no. it lights up the hole. Yeah. No, we did not. We played too much in bad weather. All right. Um, I don't even know where we are now. Drinkflation. Drinkflation. Don't I do call, it. I call BS. It's just 
squeezing the consumer. Yeah. But it, you're if seeing you're it not, everywhere. If you're taxing or not taxing and it's not getting yeah. passed on, what's like? It's never going down. I know, but it just aggravates me that if like if you're getting charged on ABV, and then it's being passed on that like this super low beer is still the same price mm-hmm. as the more you, it's you've taxed you, on sh- the brewer, the sh- not the purchaser. Yeah, right. But if they're not, they're not, they're cutting costs. That's how they're doing it. And I mean, it's a couple of percentage points, but yeah. at one point, yeah. If I'm but, in my twenties and putting the volume in, like I was but i'll say it's still the same reason why i drink macro light beers at times they can get the cost down i want value for money when i just want that if if i could get premium uh the cold yeah if i could get cold from a few episodes ago for the same price for the same price as our macro beers 100 percent. i will buy that instead but you know what like I I I'm not gonna pay twenty bucks for a twelve pack of craft light, light beer. beer. Yeah. When I know that, like, sorry, I can get. I'm. It's just a. It's just a filler. Yeah. Honestly, like, yep. I just. I'd rather I, buy. I the want light something pack, to sip on. Eighteen pack of the cheap light, and then I can spend the extra couple bucks on the starters. Yes, exactly. Because I will yep. pay more for yep. my nicer by the, starts. By the sixth like, beer, I'm not appreciating the flavor. No. No, so. and that's yeah. I'm I'm there for that. Cool. Well, our glasses of this t- yeah. tasty beer uh, are empty. Gone. Hopefully, yours are too. We will catch you next time. Oh, oh nope, no, they didn't. Yep. Never mind. Well, I'm glad they put. I'm glad they put the lights on the cars. The oh no! Lights. You can do. Uh, they do local cautions on this one. Yeah, it's local cautions. They're just gonna oh. do a blue flag. Yeah. Oh yeah, shit! No, not. That one, on the other hand. I was wondering how many people were gonna blow that corner. <laughs>